Today's video, we're gonna be going over the properties that you should not be buying that are multifamily. And believe it or not, there are a lot of properties out there that are just not smart to buy as investments. Uh, if you're looking to buy an investment property, a multifamily, whether you're an investor, house hacker, you want to buy a multifamily, you need to watch out because there are properties that are just not good. So stick around to the end on this one. You're gonna to wanna to hear all the tips and tricks I'm giving. I'm gonna be giving out some tips that say, absolutely no, don't buy that property. And I'm gonna be sprinkling some things you really, really, really wanna watch out for. So every tip I give in this video is gonna be super crucial before you buy your next investment property because uh, you're gonna not want to buy some of these properties that are out there, but people are buying them every single day and they're wondering why being a landlord stinks or in real estate investing stinks. Uh, I'm here to say that my wife and I have been doing this for over a decade now, and we are having the time of our lives helping others get to their financial goals through real estate. We are here to reduce the failure rate of new investors coming into today's market. So if you wanna be on a fast path to success when buying that next multifamily, this is the perfect video for you. Make sure you stick around to the end. My name is Sean McIntyre. I'm the house hacking realtor of Northern New Jersey and the team leader of the Living in North Jersey real estate team. There are just properties. I don't know why they sell. I don't know who is telling these people to buy these homes, but there are homes out there that are just no goes. And I'm gonna be going over things that I look for when viewing a property to make sure my client is protected and we set them up for success. Number one, there is a pool on the property. I, I, that is huge to just not move forward. The last thing you want to do is have a pool from the liability insurance, from uh, just the fact that you have tenants uh, going in, in a pool that uh, is on a multifamily. It's not the best of ideas. So when I see a pool and I pull up, especially if it's in ground, it is a deal breaker. And believe it or not, there are quite a few properties out there that have pools. Now look, if, if it's in ground, uh, that's really, really tough because you have to fill the thing. It's a lot of money. Chances of the seller wanting to get rid of it, you know, there's a reason they put the pool in and they think it's some form of value add. Maybe they lived there. So to get them to remove the pool, it's so unlikely. Uh, so if it's a in-ground pool, it's almost like 100% of the time a deal breaker. Very, very rarely is it something you want to move forward on. It's a, if it's an above ground pool, you know, maybe it's a little bit more flexibility because, you know, they are a little bit easier to take down, but 100%, you want to get rid of that pool before you have tenants there because it's just too much of a risk. So when you see a pool with a multifamily property, uh, you have to be extremely, extremely cautious. It's in ground, I would probably back out of that deal or not pursue the deal. Next thing you're gonna wanna watch out for, and this is very common in Northern New Jersey because this brand was actually made in North New Jersey, and that is Federal Pacific Electrical Boxes. Uh, they were notorious for not being able to trip and uh, meaning that if something happened on the breaker and it did not trip, the line would stay live, making the house potentially catch on fire. Well, most of the time, these things will get replaced, uh, which is great, but we still go into properties that have Federal Pacific and on top of that, knob and tube wiring. So both of these items, you're gonna wanna watch out for. I see it all the time. I see a lot of knob and tubes. Sometimes it's live, sometimes it's not. Uh, I see Federal Pacific boxes. If they are there, they are live uh, because there's no reason to keep a box. So when we're going through a property, you're gonna wanna watch out for this. Now, is it a deal breaker? Not all the time. If it's knob and tube throughout, that's a hefty, hefty paycheck that you're gonna have to put into a property. I mean, you're talking 20, 30, $40,000 uh, on, you know, on standard multifamily just to replace the knob and tube. So that tends to be a deal breaker. A lot of times sellers are gonna put in there, we're not gonna fix it. So you're gonna have to tread water there. You have to approach lightly knowing uh, that it, it's, it could really kill the deal. The Federal Pacific boxes, that's actually not too crazy of a fix. Uh, you know, the $2,500 or so will replace a box and you can get it updated. 
most of the time because of insurance involvement, it's gonna be required to be replaced. So when you come to a property that does have a Federal Pacific box, a lot of insurance providers won't even insure you unless it does get replaced. So there is some benefits to it. So it's not entirely a deal breaker, but it's something you definitely wanna watch out for and you would not want to have if you are the owner of that property. You wanna make sure it gets replaced. I get phone calls, texts, emails every single day from people just like you looking to buy, sell, and invest in the Garden State. I have awesome clients that I love working with and I'm always getting reach outs. So if you want to just hop on a call to learn a little bit more about what's happening in Northern New Jersey, let's set that up and make sure to click subscribe so you can be the first to know about future videos when they come out and stay on top of everything that's happening in the Garden State. Next is no parking. Now this is huge because this really comes down to what type of tenant you're looking to attract, what is close in your proximity, what's happening. Is it 100% across the board, no parking, a deal breaker? Absolutely not. It, it's really a county by county thing. I would say if you're in Bergen County, Essex County, Morris County, Western Counties, um, you, you're gonna definitely want parking. It's really tough to get the high desirable tenant you know, paying a very, very high luxury price uh, if you are having no parking. But if you're in a county like Hudson County where parking is very limited, there's a lot of public transportation. I mean, every block there's a bus, there's trains, there's the light rail. So a lot happening, no parking can happen. So it's gonna be a county by county thing and it's gonna be a property by property thing. You're going to need to understand that people will not pay a premium if they don't have access to parking. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Is it an absolute deal breaker? No, but there's a lot of properties that come on that we just do not want to put offers in on because, you know, people can't park. They're just not going to wanna be part of that unit. If this one's huge, uh, you're gonna wanna listen up on this. Uh, if there are horrible landlording laws, New Jersey is not across the board the same state. We get a bad reputation because there are certain cities that really, really have bad landlording laws where they have extremely horrible rent control, they have laws that don't allow you to raise rents, they have laws that don't allow you to evict people. So those are the towns you 100% want to avoid. And believe it or not, a lot of those towns are just not the nicest places to live anyways. So uh, by default, kind of avoid them. But that is something that you wanna watch out for because if you acquire a multifamily property and you cannot raise rents and the uh, market does not appreciate as much as other markets, why are you buying the property anyway? Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that just want you to buy, 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 buy without looking out for your future. Those properties in those types of cities, I avoid because uh, I wanna see you win. I wanna make sure you get to your financial goals and if you can't raise rents and you can't get people out and you can't do anything, just tied down by the government laws and everything like that, it, it's not the most advantageous place for investing property. Drop a comment below. I wanna know how many units you wanna buy in your next multifamily property watch out for is if there are long-term tenants living in the unit with low rent. Most of the time when we see this, it can be troublesome. And it's also going to depend on the type of strategy that you're looking to implement. For example, if you're looking to house hack, it's going to be different than if you're looking to purchase as a strict investor. Why is that going to vary? Well, because there's owner occupant laws that are very, very favorable in New Jersey that are gonna work in your favor. If you can tell a story that you're looking to own or occupy the unit, uh, you get things that really work in your favor. But if you're purchasing the property strictly as an investment property and there are long-term tenants in there, it's going to be a major uphill battle. Even if their leases have run out, if they are paying on time and their rents are low and everything is just not that attractive, getting them to leave is not easy. But if you're owner occupying, state, the state will side with you as an owner occupant if you need someone to leave the premises because you are living on site. It's a great law that uh, New Jersey implements for owner occupant owners. So when you're looking at a property, if you see long-term tenants, you got to understand that that could be a major red flag. 
depending on the type of strategy you're looking to implement. There's a lot happening here in this video and there's still a lot more to come. But with all that being said, there's gonna be a part two coming out to this video. So make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss out on that video when it gets released. Don't buy a property if it doesn't work for the strategy you're looking to implement. There might be a property out there that just looks really amazing, it's great, and let's say that you want to maybe attract college students, but there's no college nearby, <laughs> well, that's probably not going to work. Uh, how about if you want to implement a medium-term rental strategy, but you're buying a property that has six bedrooms? Uh, you know, that that's a lot of bedrooms. Probably not gonna work for medium-term rental. So you want to make sure that the property you're purchasing aligns with the strategy you're looking to implement. For more information on medium-term rentals, why don't you check the video that I'm going to put in the description below that will break all that down. Last and sure as heck not least is location, location, location. We've heard it all throughout our lives and that is so true in today's market is if the location stinks, you know, the property, you're, you're essentially basing it all on luck. You know, if there's no transit lines, there's no public transportation, there's no highways, there's nothing happening. Why are you buying the property to begin with? If it butts up to something that's not desirable, maybe it's next to a garbage dump, not going to perform the same way as a property next to a train station. If the city that you're buying in is not a nice city, why do you think your property is all of a sudden gonna mysteriously work? It's not. Location, location, location is huge. That is something that you will hands down continue to be one of the drivers in real estate that no matter what, when we buy a property, that if we don't have the right location, there's no reason why it's going to appreciate. There's no reason why the rents are gonna go up. You need to attract the right people and the location matters big time. Sometimes these properties are a little bit more expensive. But the way I always look at it is a more expensive property that attracts high quality tenants that produces for you is better than a property that does not attract anyone that uh, people don't want to rent and uh, you can't, you know, raise rents on. For more videos like this, make sure you click subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss a beat of what's happening in Northern New Jersey. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one on your journey to financial freedom.